Good evening, everybody, or uh, if you're watching everybody, I don't know. Uh, you could be watching me uh, in the morning, for example. Uh, anyway, welcome to Jasper's Laboratory, uh, Jasper's Laboratory. I, I said to myself I would not uh, correct myself again if I say Jasper's Laboratory, but now it was something in between again, so I don't know. It's it's uh, it's confusing. Anyway, uh, that's what you get when a Dutchman speaks uh, English uh, for a show. Uh, this show will last about an hour, one hour and a half, maybe somewhere uh, around there. Uh, we'll be doing campaign planning part three wherein uh, where i uh, will discuss uh, or where i will tell you how i uh, did my first dungeon so to say uh, in my dramour campaign for which we already did two sessions hello ashley welcome to the chat um if there is any questions in chat uh just ask them while i'm talking i will answer them and i will try to repeat the question for youtube um so we've got socials, that's a thing. Um, we've got Twitch, we've got YouTube, we've got Discord, uh, we've got Instagram, we've got Facebook and everything. Uh, a like will go a long way, a subscribe will go an even longer way, but you know, only if you love the content. Uh, and uh, yeah, so join us there. We are on a bit of an hiatus. Uh, I'm doing um, a Talking Void and a Jasper's Lab uh, in our six week uh, break. Uh, but on the 6th, uh, 6th, 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 September 6th, 6th, <laughs> man, the 6th, uh, we'll be doing another uh, uh, Precipice of Dream uh, adventure again, session. Uh, I'm looking very, very much forward to that. It will be a new arc. We'll be on on Monday, half past 8 Central European time. Uh, and we'll be leaving the town of Woutford. Uh, towards uh, another town. Uh, we are going towards Brentwick, which we've been doing for about 30 sessions now. Uh, anyway, uh, so if you want to join us uh, in our actual play of, of Dungeons & Dragons uh, play, uh, you can join us there and uh, go over what happened uh, before that and uh, after that. You, 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 you can enter in a new arc. We are fresh on the road, probably. We'll start. Fresh on the road. Oh, already have, have to take a sip. Some clear water. Can you see? I uh, can somewhat see, right? Hmm. Just to keep my throat fresh. I always forget to drink when I'm doing these things. So, uh, we'll be doing a dungeon. Uh, th that's uh, the thing that I was uh, telling you. Um, so, just to summarize a bit uh, what happened in the last... Uh, did you cut your... Yes, I cut my hair. It's far shorter. It says 20 centimeters shorter or about seven inches, uh, eight inches, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So in the first uh, in this uh, episode of this series, I told you all. Uh, thank you very much. It looks good, <laughs> he says. Uh, welcome to the stream, Shanks. Um, in the first episode, uh, I told you how uh, a one shot ended, uh, ended up uh for me having a third party to play uh, to uh, be the dungeon master of uh fresh uh, players who never played D, &D uh who invited me to their table to do a, a one shot which happened to be a free shot and then turned into a, a monthly campaign um i discussed somewhat of what i did in that one shot it's not really relevant for this story uh, then in the second episode i discussed uh what kind of players i I've got Auron, who is the, the tiefling uh, sorcerer. I've got Bochi, who is a human uh, monk. Um, he's a uh, way of the stars, which is a homebrew. Uh, and the tiefling sorcerer is a wild, uh, a wild thingy. Uh, then we have uh, Felar, the beast conclave ranger half elf. Uh, then we have Findal, the. Yes, you're late, but welcome to the stream, Ralver. Um, then we've got Findal, who's the Halfling Rogue, Assassin. Uh, then we have Gorum, who's the Barbarian uh, Half-Orc, who by now has two paths. He has the, uh, uh, the, the Storm Herald path, and he has the, the Frenzy Berserker path, which is a story for another time. Uh, and now I have to uh, uh, say that... 
I'm the powers of the Sun Soul monk. Because, yeah, why not? Uh, and then we have Reudrach, who is the Dwarven Paladin, Dwergar actually, but uh, that is part of the storyline. Uh, a conqu a Paladin of Conquest, and we have Victorian, who is the, the cleric. And now I'm uh, trying to, to think of if I didn't uh, skip anybody. Uh, and he's human as well, by the way, the, the, the cleric. No, I've got them all, um, so that's uh, okay then. Um, and uh, I also uh, explained about how the, um, the players have their own wants at the table um, and how they got invited by a mage named Horatio Wittegar uh, to, uh, through a proxy, uh, Johanna Silvershine, uh, to uh, retrieve a spellbook for them. Um, and um, Wittegar is actually the big bad of the campaign, or at least I'm not, well, might not be the big bad of the whole campaign, but he's, he is a big bad. Uh, and uh, there are some things happening. Uh, yeah, uh, he, okay, so they destroyed something in the city and then he kind of scried on them, saw that one of the characters was probably his son and decided that instead of hunting them, he would invite them and send them on a quest to see what they are capable of. And at the same time, meeting his son that he's never met, and the son doesn't know that he is his father and stuff. And at the same time, it brought fate together because, uh, uh, well, fate brought them together because the half orc has uh, uh, a symbol of the Chalice of the Seven, which is this older adventuring party that destroyed this sand sorcerer and uh, this uh, Horatio Whitaker or Orson Bone Marrow, who is the actual inhabitant of the body of Horatio Whitaker, is uh, uh, wants to retrieve uh, a certain relic from this uh, ancient sorcerer. Anyway, they get to uh, to this uh, Horatio Whitaker guy in his uh, mage house. He says, I can't cast any spells because they stole my spell book and I'm kind of... So uh, they kind of escape my... ...with stuff. But if you retrieve the spell book, I'm forever in your debt and uh, maybe we can do stuff together. That, that's the gist of it. Oh, of course, I spoke like this and stuff. Um, and um, well, they were immediately suspicious, which I loved because that uh, gave me uh, something to be mindful of as I talked uh, as this character. So the, 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 the most funny thing that I did with this character is that when they first opened the door and Aaron was stepping in, uh, he's the father of Aaron, the first thing he said to him, uh, my son, welcome. Uh, but uh, as an elderly man, they just thought this was kind of, uh, uh, you know, him addressing a younger person uh, as, uh, yeah, <laughs> as his son, so to say. Um, so, um, what will we, what will we be discussing? That's that's the next thing, then, right? Um, let's see if I can change the screen. Yeah, there we go. The stolen spellbook. I called the. Uh, the quest, the stone spellbook, for for the purposes of this uh, stream, um, and we can uh, see some things happening there, right? Uh, so uh, I'm talking about uh, a location named, namely Harvick uh, Harvick Bronzeheart's Tower. I'm going to talk about uh, the story, what happened, and why. Uh, I'm talking. Uh, I'm going to talk about new players, uh, how to approach your first dungeon with new players as an experienced dungeon master. This is an experienced dungeon master stream. At least I tried. I think I'm an experienced dungeon. Master. Uh, helps experienced dungeon masters see the way that other dungeon masters could do their uh, adventures. Adventures, uh, and so. enemies exploring without finding and uh, DM anxiety and how to uh, not give away a thing just because it is there uh, now th th that <laughs> might uh, uh, invoke some uh, questions when I put it like that so I have been thinking about this other thing as well we've talked about this on talking void and that is that uh, a happy DM is DM where the players are 
uh, happy at his table or her table. Uh, Shank says, I don't know if it's my computer or not, but experiencing audio cutting uh, infrequently. Uh, is anybody else experiencing that? Because if that is the case, then I have to do something about it. But I don't see any interruptions while I'm talking. So uh, please uh, tell me in, uh, in chat if uh, anybody else is experiencing the audio cutting. Um, so uh, DM anxiety. Uh, so what I like to... Uh, oh, okay, so... Um, I'm not happy when my players are happy at the table. Or at least... Um, that's not the thing that I am going for. Of course, I'm happy when my players are happy. Um, okay, Ashley is experiencing it as well. Hmm. But I can't see it. So what's happening now? Uh, I can put on my headset and try it that way if it's uh, too prominent. So silly because I can't see it happening on, on my bar. Uh, normally I can see it drop out or something. Mm. Video feed was fine, just went silent for a second a couple of times. It really went silent. Is it still going on then? Because that's really strange because I can't see any interruptions. Hmm. Maybe refresh and see if that helps. Let me know. Uh, I'm going to continue this storyline at least, and then uh, we'll see. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, I find that having happy players is a big part of being a dungeon master. But I can't just be a dungeon master and not do things for myself um, uh and be happy about the sessions I'm playing. So I have to, uh, what I'm saying is that I have to challenge myself as well, make it uh, at, at times um, uh, uh, introduce things that uh, might challenge my campaign in a certain way, or uh, things might get resolved because of people, uh, players addressing non-paying characters in such a way that they spoil part of the adventure and then I have to cope with that. All these kinds of things make a uh, being a dungeon master interesting for me. And so when I did this uh, dungeon, uh, Harwick's, uh, Bronze Har Harwick Bronze Hearts' Tower, um, I gave a lot of uh, possible spoilers to the players to what was going to happen. They could find out a lot about what happened there, about uh, who Horatio was. Um, they could find Harvick himself, uh, which wasn't the goal of the adventure. And um, yeah, they could discover a lot of strange things and dark things happening in that tower. Uh, so that was my uh, the, the thing that kept me... Uh, um, involved at the table so to say i'm involved anyway but um yeah th that was really fun to do to give them possible spoilers for what would happen if they were level 10 and stuff uh and they were level two at this point um so that was uh, that is a thing for me uh keeping it uh dangerously uh um sp spoiler uh uh how, how do i say this well, it, possibly give them spoilers because they are doing a fine job. Um, so that's that's what's in it for me. Uh, but then uh, I have to I had to consider uh, that they are a new party as well, and so they didn't know all the rules, and um, that can be a thing that, that spoils some of the adventure experience for them, but it can also be the, the thing that makes them discover uh, ways that uh, an experienced dungeon ma uh, master or experienced players don't think of anymore. That's always an interesting fact as well. So anyway, I, uh, I went for the versatile approach uh, in this uh, campaign and I wrote this down. Uh, so I'm going to quote that for you so that uh, uh, 
Uh, well, I'll first show you the map. Yeah, I'll first show you the map. That's that's nice to do as well, right? Um, now, I hope it isn't too blocky, but this is the, the tower that we're talking about. I did this when I was on a holiday. I had all the maps, and then I just started drawing it from the maps up. It's um, well, You can see about, uh, I think, five uh, levels here, but there are two underground. Uh, one is, you can see at the right side of the tower, there's a stair down, and which leads to the windows that look up from a kind of basement level and below the basement level there's actually a secret level um, uh, you can see that there are some parts missing in the uh, left upper corner uh, from this view uh, you can see that the the tower has been destroyed uh, partly destroyed and the bridge uh, well thanks uh, shanks he is saying that's so cool looking uh, and the, the, the little out bu uh, building the tower that's uh, across a bridge that's across the water is partly destroyed as well. Um, so, uh, and you can see that, uh, so the thing is that doors, of course, you can see two doors in the in the lower level of the, the tower, uh, one in the middle of the, the right part and one in the middle of the left part that leads to the bridge that leads to the island. So those are two obvious uh, entrances, uh, but this is what I wrote down. I normally don't write that much down, but I think I, when I wrote this down, I really wanted to possibly um, invest in this tower for the future to maybe implement it on the, the for example, the uh, the DMs Guild uh, thing. Um, so I wrote down, finally getting there, right? Uh, I, I wrote down, the tower can be entered in a number of ways. All are equally viable and no entrance interferes with what should or could happen in the tower. On the main floor, there's a door and a hole in the wall. In the center of the river, there's a small tower that can be climbed and, the, and a bridge connects the small tower and the wizard tower. Just below this level, there's a chute that leads up into the level 2 toilet. A small character could climb this, though it is still uh, being used. On higher levels, there's a lot of windows. All of these are broken. Time and Strife have done their jobs. Also, on level 5 and 6, part of the northwestern wall is missing. Finally, one could climb to the rooftop and enter from above. Um, you know, th th and that's the fun thing about uh, Dungeons & Dragons, is that you can approach a building from every direction. I remember that the first adventure that I did, that I did was called The Dark House. And I... Uh, Really big house, uh, seven floors, uh, but uh, much. Um, and uh, then, <laughs> then I had to decide on the spot that I couldn't enter by climbing or something or by breaking windows because that would have sp spoiled the whole adventure, which was a big oversight. But these days I just love it when players do it that way. Imagine I was kind of 15 years old then and a bit disappointed in, in, in my own oversight at that moment. Uh, it was a terrible adventure anyway. Well, there were good parts, but in the long run it was kind of terrible. Um, so yeah, this is the tower. Uh, and as I talked about, it's, uh, you can enter it in uh, very different ways. So now I have to end studio modus uh, and I have to click this. Uh, so this is a map um, of the surrounding area. So they came from the uh, southeast, which is uh, kind of the uh, right bottom corner, uh, and they approached this uh, hill, where this, uh, which is in the middle, where this tower is built on. And you can see the start of a, a staircase that leads to the lower kind of balcony uh, where the front door is located. There's a stream to the left. Uh, I, I uh, drew the in the, the the direction of the stream and uh, how you would uh, get around the pillars of the bridge. You can see a, a part of a. Um, uh, yeah, you can actually can see two cutouts. There, there's one within the uh, the big rock, which is in the center of the map, where you can see the the the, the lowest floor, so to say, uh, with three rooms in it, and you can see that in the bottom like oct octagonal. Uh, room. There's a secret trapdoor in the in the ceiling, uh, 
I'll, I'll be getting back to that one. And you can in the leftmost in the, in the island, so to say, you can see a stair that's going down, but it's cut off on, on both sides because uh, the next part that you would be able to see is on the map that's above this level, uh, and the the lower part is below this level. Um, uh, oh yeah, and uh, that that lower part is actually in the top right corner of the map. A bit of the northern part is uh, dropping off, but okay, that that is a kind of uh, the chamber that is there. Um, okay, so uh, this was the map, and now I have to talk about what's happening uh, in this location and what has happened in this location. So um, the tower is uh, Harwick Bronzehart's tower. And um, Harwick Bronzehart was a dabbling wizard. Uh, he had kind of a lab on the upper floors of his tower. Uh, he was happily married uh, with a wife called Siva, I think. He had three kids. Uh, and uh, he just lived here in this wizard tower, sometimes got visitors, uh, liked to entertain guests. Uh, the roads that led here have long been gone. And with long, I've, I think I'm talking about two decades or something. Um, and uh, yeah, he just entertained guests, uh, lived a happy life and, and everything. Uh, then at, at a certain point, uh, or his spirit had found a way to occupy bodies to gain knowledge of the uh, specific uh, 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 capabilities of certain individuals. Uh, and Orson uh, uh, found the body of Harwick at, at some kind of... Uh, Location, maybe it was in the the big city, or maybe it was not. I don't know. It doesn't really matter for the story. He got possessed, and he returned to his house and uh, or his tower. And from that point on, things started to go wrong. Um, he built a cellar, a secret cellar, which can be seen in the right. This addition to the to the. He neglected his own secret rooms in, in, the, in the bottom of his own towers, which is in the center of this map. Uh, and he started to invite more guests, but he uh, started to do more criminal activity with them as well. Uh, he didn't understand what he was doing, and he was getting pretty angry with them and kind of terrorizing them. So that was pretty scary for them. And... Um, he kind of alienated all his friends and he started to do magical experiments and experiments in his labs above uh, he often would uh, go up there with other people but they would never return for example so there was dark stuff happening there then uh, his wife uh, and a couple of friends tried to kill him tried to kill him at a certain point because she knew that he wasn't his her husband anymore uh, but they failed. Uh, the guests all died, and the children and his wife fled. So that's an okay thing then. Um, at, uh, uh, somewhat later, they returned uh, with uh, a paladin. Uh, uh, I'll tell you the name because I like giving you the name. Uh, uh, Lucia the Shield Maiden uh, was her name and uh, uh, she brought kind of a small army and bombarded the uh, um, the keep of the, or, or the tower with a, um, a catapult and blew a couple of holes into the walls uh, and finally uh, and, and she uh, got the help of Horatio Wittegar which was a, a, an old wizard uh, who lived kind of nearby uh, and uh, defeated Harwick. They did this with uh, the uh, dagger of the eternal barrier uh, because uh, they kind of got the idea that his soul was kind of uh, corrupted and they didn't want to know what would happen if uh, he died with that soul still in its body because he had been kind of possessed. But what they didn't know was that the soul was an, uh, a separate entity from Harwick, his own uh, soul. So uh, they put him in his own chamber. They set a, specter, a spectator on him, a kind of a, a small beholder, with a couple of skeletons, and they would uh, go towards this uh, very secret room uh, every now and again to see if he's still there sitting in his chair with this dagger sticking in his uh, chest. Uh, but uh, through time, 
Um, uh, although the, the dagger did prevent the soul from escaping easily, it could escape. And when Horatio Whitgar got there at a certain time, um, the soul took possession of Horatio. And uh, in th that way, uh, uh, tomb. Um, then he got in contact with his uh, people in Dramur again and stuff. And he, uh, he went to the wizard tower because Horatio was a much more powerful wizard than Harwick was. And he was a diviner, which was a kind of magic that he could uh, use uh, very well because he wanted to know what was going to happen and how he could get stuff and, 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 and such things. So, and a lot of that had to do with the party that was soon coming to his house. Or soon, <laughs> years later. But anyway, uh, so the the tower got abandoned. He didn't go back there. His wife and ch uh, the wife of Harwick and uh, and their children didn't go back there either. But uh, they left an imprint in the house. It, uh, the 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 tower is now haunted, except for the lower floors. Uh, those got cleared by uh, two hop uh, or, or a tribe of goblins led by uh, three hop goblins or, or two hop goblins. Uh, Magutar, who was uh, uh, who uh, had enough of the war and uh, went with a couple of goblins towards this. I have to look up the other name again because uh, uh, Vesra, I think. Uh, burp, burp, burp. Uh, Vestra, yeah. Uh, who was uh, his kind of right hand lieutenant. Uh, Vestra uh, liked the new way of living that, uh, that uh, Magutar. Um, Proposed uh, living kind of in peace with this goblin, uh, with these goblins around them. I think there's about uh, 50 goblins here, a couple of children, a couple of elderly, a couple of non combatants, a uh, couple of uh, fighters and stuff who uh, now occupy this, uh, this tower and they live uh, mainly on the, the lower two levels and in the basement. Um, Uh, where the, the players will uh, get to this. Uh, they have been told that a couple of goblins took the spell book and went up north, uh, which is true because uh, uh, Horatio, together with uh, Johanna, um, a kind of spell, kind of like a suggestion spell on these two goblins, and told them to take the, uh, the spell book that uh, through an open window and take it with them uh, and kind of erase their memory of the uh, them giving the command uh, and they took it with them and took it to the uh, to Mark Lutar, who was kind of uh, uh, didn't like what they had done because uh, he doesn't want any, any fuss so now uh, now we have to talk about the players you know because they will arrive here and depending on if it's night or day, I think they arrived in the evening, uh, but I had decided that if they arrived during the day, they would see that there were all these children, goblin children playing there. There were some fishermen. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of laughter. There's a, lo a lot of nice things happening. And um, this would uh, give them the first hint that there might be something up here that's not quite normal for the average goblin that you would su suspect. Uh, that is both in-game and out of character because um, most of them are World of Warcraft players. Uh, they know that they when they go to a certain dungeon, they will explore to the end and they find a big chest and then they uh, they have the treasure that's being uh, that will be given uh, when they open it and they have to do good rolls and stuff uh, but that's not the case in Dungeons and Dragons so I wanted to give them another kind of um, challenge here uh, namely the are you going to f uh, do the friendly approach or uh, are you going uh, hello Vix welcome to the stream uh, or are you going to do the, the, the hostile approach so because they got here in the evening, there were a couple of goblins uh, standing on the balcony. Okay, so now I'm going to the next uh, uh, map. That is this one. Uh, sorry for the little bit of a darker uh, shade across this map. I had to take a picture because I couldn't get it on the... So 
path map that's uh, the, the, which says uh, n1 there this is kind of the basement level uh, of the of the keep you see that uh, you see at the uh, right top of it there's this stair uh, getting up to the balcony and it is going uh, uh, around the the tower um, but you see that there's this basement level which doesn't have any exits except for a couple of slits that let some light into the area six i hope you can all see this i don't know if you're watching on your telephone um and you see a secret trap door in, uh, in room number five and then there's a stair upstairs and then you see a secret door uh, at the leftmost uh, at in the left wall with a corridor running to the to the other island so this this was a, a funny part of uh, uh, what, um, uh, what might give me anxiety is that they would discover this uh, secret door and then go here and find the body of Harvick because when you go to the other side and you go through that door uh, and go down, that's where Harvick's body is uh, uh, positioned with the dagger of the eternal barrier in his chest. Um, then uh, the, the layer above that, uh, the, the, the N2, which is uh, the, the map below the top left uh, map there you can see uh the the stair that's going around the the tower coming up to the main door and uh you can see that the bottom uh, uh, walls are kind of destroyed and you can see in the left uh, left upper corner that there's a hole in the wall that's where one of the uh catapult thingies uh, got through and you can see the the big ball still lying there and then the uh, lower right corner of the of this uh, level, and then the other level that we have to discuss now is N3, which is in the right, uh, top rightmost corner, which is where um, the Makutar lives uh, with uh, with his uh, people, and um, yeah, he's kind of ruling the the little goblin tribe from that point, and you can see. Uh, to the left of that uh, area five from on that same map that's the top of the tower that's on the island so on n2 there's the the the, the normal layer layer which doesn't have a, a, a trap door towards the the one on n1 because uh, that is only as a secret entrance that's running below it's a kind of crawl space below the 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 bridge so to say you can only well, you could uh, destroy the upper part of the bridge and go in through that, but there's no real entrance to the secret um, cellar uh, through the tower itself. Um, okay. So they arrived in the evening and they observed this tower. They see uh, uh, the goblins uh, uh, patro patrolling on this uh, area one of both the N1 and the N2 maps. N stands for niveau in Dutch, which is kind of level, but I used the, the Dutch uh, thing for that. Um, uh, so they're patrolling there, they have a torch and everything, and they are think immediately thinking, oh, okay, let's not approach this tower through, uh, uh, through that direction. Let's just uh, go around. Uh, so now I have to go to the overview again. Uh, and let's go to the... Okay, here's where it's get, it gets funny in a way. Let's go to, uh, to the, well, go to the uh, the big rock that's uh, lying there, uh, kind of northeast of uh, uh, two, which is the number in the river. Let's hide behind that. Then let's try to cross the stream, uh, go up the, 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 the rocky uh, thing there and across the bridge. Uh, because that might lead to another door into this building. They hadn't seen that before. Now, party <laughs> with some guys in uh, near heavy armor and stuff, uh, uh, where the dexterity of two characters is an eight at least, um, is not that stealthy. And they had a really hard time, first off, getting there, but they, the, the goblins didn't see them. And then getting across the stream because then there are a lot of uh, creatures that aren't that strong and even though the uh, they had a lot of trouble and some of them were drifting off and it was kind of a whole exciting adventure only uh, uh, only getting to the other side 
which was pretty funny, uh, which let them know that the stakes were high, which is what I really loved, because they were thinking of kind of, uh, they were um, not being let by, uh, they weren't going for the uh, for the main door, so to say, and that's what I really liked about how they uh, how they did this. Uh, I didn't have to tell them the options, so, so to say. Okay, I could have said that you'd see side of the tower, which might be kind of a toilet, so a little person might climb through. But uh, I didn't say that, and I didn't. Uh, well, I mentioned uh, all the uh the windows on every floor and i mentioned that there's a top to the tower but they didn't get to that part where they were thinking okay let's climb the tower from the other side or something which might have been for the best thing what the results of their strength checks were when they went into the water so they actually went into the water they went on to the bridge and this is where uh, i really had this uh complicated new player thing happen so the rogue was really into his role. He, uh, Findal, uh, he got his oil out. He uh, uh, he started uh, doing the what are they called the the, the scharnieren the you know where the where the door turns. Uh, can't come up with the English word for some reason. Anyway, um, he used the oil on the door, so to say uh, hinge. Yeah, the hinges. Thank you. Um, um it did oil on the hinges i gave him a uh, uh, advantage on uh, his uh, stealth checks and his uh, sleight of hand checks to open the door and he got into the, the, the like the the bottom level of the tower uh now i have to put this on again no that's the wrong one there we go uh so he got in uh, if you look at n2 you see the bridge and then you see the door in the tower and he got goblins here uh, but it was very silent he was super stealthy went to the uh, northwestern point and he took the stair got to the cellar which is where's the cellar again oh yeah uh, the n1 of course he got which was interesting because he took a look into the room uh, marked with a 2 and uh, didn't notice the secret door he didn't notice the secret hatch as well in the, the bottom left. And he uh, he heard a lot of snoring in area six because that's where most of the goblins sleep. And some of them sleep in area four as well. Uh, and then uh, the other players had enough. The paladin said Leroy Jenkins and they rushed in. Which was re uh, really sad for a couple of reasons. Uh, first off, uh, they rushed in, they alarmed 50 goblins yeah and okay 30 of them were kind of uh, commoners and children and elderly and stuff but the other 20 were goblins uh well armed um and uh they rushed in and they started hacking and they were quite unsuccessful in their attacks um so we went into combat mode and uh that that was really uh a, a very tough battle um the monk uh, went through the door at area one uh, on level uh two uh, and got confronted with the guards that were outside who got help from other guards that were outside uh, patrol that was happening there so he got shot by like four arrows and was down uh, they couldn't uh, they got reinforcements uh, from the upstairs uh, um, staircase that's the one in the middle on n2 a uh, couple of goblins came down i think the hobgoblin festa also came down and they got slaughtered they really got slaughtered so that was the the one thing that was kind of sad the other thing that was kind of sad was the expression on the rogue's face because he had this moment in the spotlight he really was doing very well uh at his job and they totally took that away from him uh, so that was a learning moment that i didn't address during the session but that i did address after the session that you know, sometimes you have to sit back and let someone shine when it's his moment to shine or her moment to shine uh, that's what we took away from the session the other thing is that uh, they died uh, well there's this thing with the monk he uh his storyline is is that he 
shift dimensions and when he does so uh, things also stay the same so i asked him would you like to alter time to get back to the bridge uh, to that moment and know that when uh, uh, Reudrach would shout you are Jenkins you would say well no because I've seen our deaths when you do that and he agreed so this was an interesting thing as well because I explained it to them as saying that I, I always give this one option where uh, you could um, uh, uh, this one chance at redemption so to say um, and uh, that takes a lot of forms when uh, in my campaign. It can sometimes be when it's t at higher levels that you collect the ears of your party members and go to a person and resurrect them without any gear. Or this uh, this was stupid, uh, maybe do a timey wimery or, uh, thing or a non-playing character would intervene. Uh, well, those options were out. So I was just saying, you know, let's do this uh, montage where you get a sense of that you shouldn't do this and then we continue on, the, on this path again. Uh, he chose to, d to do that and then he immediately saw this guy in a blue rope with a, a golden skull head with uh, with uh, strange teeth uh, uh, appearing who said <laughs> or something you know there was a bit more to it and that uh, so uh, and that actually tied into his backstory uh, where uh, uh, he now starts to discover that he's sometimes altering time and although it gives him stuff in a positive sense, like him being alive, for example, or a friend of him being alive. We'll get into that later. Uh, it also has drawbacks, namely that this entity, kind of a wraith entity, uh, you could do uh, like a fresh uh, uh, wraith kind of sense, or maybe a Prince of Persia wraith kind of sense, you know. There's this entity coming after him when he does this, and it's it's getting more solid o over time. and and. At this point, it has it has its face, so to say. Um, so, uh, but but I told uh, I talked about uh, for them. It seemed like I gave them uh, an opt out uh, at that point, and only later did they realize that it was part of the story as well. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and then they uh, tried diplomacy on the second try. They actually kind of, <laughs> well, they were making such loud noises that they hear the goblins say from the other uh, side of the wall, what's happening? Uh, and uh, they actually started the conversation. Uh, they got up to level three and they um, talked to Makutar, who, uh, but it's a really strange story. We, oh, did they have a cutout there? Maybe I saw a cutout there. Well, anyway. Um, Maybe I have to really talk into this mic. I don't know. Um, um, yeah, they ha they had the spell book, uh, but they didn't want to immediately give it to them because uh, they didn't know what was happening as well. And so they said, you know, we really want to live here. Uh, we are not hostile. Uh, we just love our uh, little habitat that we we've developed here. Uh, so we would like to give it to you if you get rid of the haunting stuff that's happening in the levels above us. Um, and, you know, they could have <laughs> tried to kill them again or walk away. That would all have been an option. Some might have led to death. Uh, but they decided that they were going to explore the rest of the tower uh, and uh, get rid of the evil there and then get the spellbook to get back to Horatio. So when that had happened, they were kind of tired, uh, and they got uh, uh, a room for them, which is room two on level one, which has a secret door in it, which was pretty funny. I was looking at my own map and said, where would they put this adventuring party that might possibly kill them? And I thought room two would actually be logical, but dang it, there's the secret door that I might not want to have been found. Uh, the, I think they stayed there for four nights, and every time I got at least two of them uh, make a perception check or an investigation check or whatever to see if they could find it. Now, it had a high DC, but over a lot of roles, you would expect that at least one of them would have uh, been able to uh, find this secret door, but nope, they didn't. And this was really ex exciting for me because they didn't know what they were wrong for, and I did know, and if they had done it, they would have found 
a lot of cool stuff there which tied into the the main storyline um but uh, they didn't uh, they also didn't find a secret door in the in the bottom room to the to the kind of vault of uh, harvick uh, so they didn't find uh, well they they didn't need to get past the stone golems that were there or some lesser golems not, not the strongest one i wanted to give them the option to actually <laughs> succeed at that uh, part and they didn't find the, the rope of many things that was hidden there um so they skipped uh, kind of skipped that uh they went for the makutar yeah i think i broke it went off again anyway uh for the makutar storyline and they uh, they were uh, going through the the top levels of the of the tower to uh, actually clean them um so what they did do was that the the first level uh, of the tower that they were going to explore was n4 uh which had the sleeping uh, rooms of uh, of the bedrooms to the left of all the free, free the, of the children to the right there was this uh, big sitting room and uh, the right top corner is the 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 master bedroom with a walk-in closet um Yeah, so they um, they went up and immediately this area got distorted. Now, so um, this is what you can do. This is a map. This is a simple map uh, of of a, of a of a level of a of a tower where you can um, see that. Uh, there are just a couple of rooms. They are empty on my map. I think I wrote down some stuff about these rooms, uh, like uh, what could be found in room four on the, this level, uh, and, and that's about it. Uh, I know that there was going to be a bench in the t uh, top right most chamber, which was uh, a kind of elven lady that he kind of murdered in this uh, uh, in this tower after his wife had left him. Uh, his three children were left, uh, were gone as well, of course. But uh, their, their um, the horror of their uh, time there had left a couple of um, uh, what are they called? Can't come up with a name. I have it here. Let me see. Uh, Will o' wisps uh, in their stead. Uh, so those uh, were uh, going around there. Um, and I just made it really spooky, uh, just talking about this uh, level as if it was kind of in another realm. And this willow wisp came f uh, through the through the walls and everything, and sh started to shoot lightning. Five foot um, uh, uh, corridor, uh, so they had to um, really uh, walk in file. Um, Okay, now I'm cutting off. Uh, uh, chat, am I cutting off now? Because I think I'm cutting off, right? Let's do a sip of water while I wait. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to do my uh, my headset. Mo one moment. Or maybe, maybe. Let me see if I can do it like this. Okay, can you still hear me? Yeah, I think I'm fine, right? Let's try it like this for a moment. I might have actually uh, uh, actually done a double mic input. Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah. Okay, so uh, hopefully this will work. Um, I had to put my Discord on mute, <laughs> which I forgot. Might might be what uh, what what is uh, doing the cutoffs. Um, Anyway, uh, I hope it wasn't too bad before because uh, this has to go on, on YouTube. So <laughs> anyway, um, so it, it was a single file fight, which was new for them as well. Uh, they had to think about how to shift. And then uh, in the end, the the, uh, the paladin uh, decided to go to the bottom door and into the, the bedroom. It was pretty minor. Okay banshee uh, while well, none of them were there and he got crit with the banshee or, or not crit uh, the banshee hull does an amazing amount of damage and he kind of went to zero hit points all at once and they really had to save them while fighting the willow wisps and it was kind of 
a very cool encounter which uh for me the, the the idea behind it is that well first they got a sense of that uh of these children that were there and this bedroom that was haunted by this banshee and this dark things that might have happened in the past so that was pretty cool and then at the same time it was an experience in how to fight in small corridors uh, how to uh, not split the party if you can but if you have to uh, how can you get there in time to save your friends anyway uh, so it, it was a really cool level to let them experience what uh, Dungeons and Dragons could do in combat um, and they were stumbling over each other and, and it was really funny and, and dangerous and exciting at the same time um, then they went up to level 5 N5 that is and there are a lot of skeletons there because the guests had all been murdered on this level also uh, if, uh, on uh, level 4 in uh, room number 5 I think you can see there's another ball uh, of a, a bullet uh, lying there on the ground again uh, which came uh, through that hole that you can see in the middle of uh, N5 uh, where a lot of uh, that room has been blasted out uh, which you can also see on N6 and even on N7 on the, the upper um, balcony. Uh, you can see this hole going all through the, the whole tower. You can even see it uh, in the leftmost corner on this uh, uh, drawing of it. You can see that bullet shattered from that point, which would have been a possible entry. Anyway, they confronted the guests here uh, and um yeah i think this yeah and then the next level there was this kind of gambling hall where harvick himself a uh, kind of ghost uh, first them to uh i'm still well anyway inviting them to uh, take part in the gambling and they did it there was also a mimic here which is always a cool uh uh encounter and and uh uh, what is it? A living carpet thing. So they had to fight that. Kind of enchanted and everything. So they went uh, through kind of horror, uh, undead, and now ghostly stuff. Uh, where uh, I had them experience multiple facets of what was what had happened here. And they really got the sense that there was a big tragedy that had happened here in the past. Um, they tried to get gold from the... Uh, from the but that gold uh, kind of uh, um, attacked them when they tried to steal it. Uh, so that was a thing. Um, and they get an instant hate. It really was a bastard, even in his ghost form. It was kind of a shade form. It wasn't really a, a, an enemy or anything. They went up to the roof. There was a gelatinous cube there, which held a breastplate and a, and a, and a, and a longsword from a character that had tried to... Uh, well, circumvent the goblins at a certain point and tied into the backstory of one of the characters as well. And then they went into the upper right tower to uh, go up and they uh, encountered a couple of Nofix, which were uh, remains of uh, wizards that had helped Har Harwick uh, that had died during experiments and turned into Nofix. Uh, and once they cleared that, they went back to Makotar and they... Um, uh, they found some treasure along the way. Two of the treasures, uh, Findal, uh, the rogue uh, stole. Um, and they um, they went back to Makutar, got the book, and got some allies in this manner. And uh, the evil had been banished. And so they went back to Horatio. Whoa. <laughs> uh, so that's the story about this dungeon. Um, so let's, let's do the right... Uh, Let's do this again. Um, so, location, uh, Harvick's Bronzeheart's Tower, with the story uh, behind it, which they only, you know, um, they didn't really need to explore what the real story was. But when you uh, can describe that you see the uh, the, the bullets, I don't know if you should call it the bullets when it... Uh, when it uh, 
uh, like the big stones things that uh, get thrown by catapults uh, are lying there they have a sense that uh, what, uh, what has happened and you can describe it in a way uh, when you uh, write a history for this location where you understand why that bullet is there which is pretty important and you also get a kind of layered history to this area when you think about all the things that uh, followed in this area base and why the goblins are there and stuff so um yeah that's i think that's quite cool uh to do it that way one second um uh, because Okay, like that. I think you can hear me again, right? Yes, without any uh, problems, I hope. Please tell me that you can hear me because otherwise I don't know what to do. Yes, you can hear me. Okay, so let's uh, let's try it like this. Sometimes I don't know what what this mic is doing at uh, at certain points. Uh, I shouldn't have uh, twisted the the cable. I think uh, we'll t we'll get into that later. Uh, sound might be a bit different. Uh, what was I saying? Um, yeah. So uh, taking into consider uh, taking the history into consideration, you can really elaborate as a dungeon master as to how you approach your location. Uh, keeping those secrets a, a secret is a major thing you can do as a dungeon master because it keeps you at the tip of your toes. Uh, of, of your seat and you can um but when they discover it uh, you uh this will give you well it gives me a kind of adrenaline rush and it gives the player an adrenaline rush as well especially if they see that the dungeon master is kind of taken aback by it that's how i do it the versatile approach is i think a, a very important thing that i did here uh, for the party letting them really consider how they would uh address the situation that was here they could have taken the goblins by force if they picked them off one at a time or waited to uh until uh sunrise and just uh start with the uh for example with the uh the patrols that were out there and then uh, sneaking up on the on the guards and stuff but they also would have seen all the children just playing there with kites and stuff and a uh, football uh and that would have given them some conflict because there's a cleric and a, and a paladin both of paragon which is the good god of my world in there so there are these kinds of things um they made friends instead of enemies but there were enemies as well so that gave them really uh, really gave them something to explore uh and they got a lot of magical items but they didn't get all the magical items that were there um and that's another thing so when you uh watch us play um uh, uh the the precipice of dreams on youtube you will see that we don't get that many magical items we are level five and we don't have that many but here i have a monthly party um that uh, has seven players in it that level up quite fast because that's the way how i handle their adventure and that's what i they also really like and so i, I I kind of give them magic items in abundance because I know that in time they will become kind of useless again. So I 
I can do this. Uh, and there were a lot of magical items to be found in this third level dungeon even. Uh, so uh, as, a, as a list, I think I have a list somewhere. Uh, there was a Want of Magic Detection, which they found. Dust of Dryness, which they also found. Potion of Animal Friendship, which they found. Scroll of Mass Polymorph, which they didn't find. <laughs> but, which would have been pretty funny. Potion of Storm Giant Strength, which they found and used on the Mimic, because that guy was uh, trying to uh, uh, eat them. Potion of Supreme Healing, which they didn't find. Eyes of Charming, they found. Breastplate, plus one they found. Short sword, plus one they found. Cloak of Protection, they didn't find, I think. Ring of Spell Storing, they did find. Minor Javelin of Lightning, which actually became a Javelin of Lightning, which they found. Belt of Failing Constitution, which is a cursed item that uh, gives them a plus bonus on Constitution, but can get you stunned, they also found. So they found uh, quite a lot of uh, treasures in there. And that was kind of okay, because... Uh, after this adventure they got to level 4 and they are now level 9 and uh, yeah you know uh, some of them uh, these items have become redundant and others are, they can still use but they also find new stuff that they can use and this party is really bad at searching stuff uh, places or uh, they're really good at skipping places that's the thing i have to tell you so i can put a lot of magical items in these dungeons and even uh uh, reuse some of them in other locations and they still will only find part of all these uh, uh, magical items which is a thing I recommend for dungeon masters don't just as I am saying uh, uh, how to not give away things a thing just because it's there like the secret uh, areas in in, uh, uh, in in the tower it is no problem if they don't find anything everything that the, the map holds so to say uh exploring without finding yeah for them uh th th this ties into this actually uh uh they uh but not only into the uh um magical items and, and the treasury stuff they they got a, a lot of gold and stuff but they um they didn't find the whole history of the place. They didn't read into some of the stuff that I was saying about the location. They could have gotten more out of Harwick when they talked to him uh, because he was the kind of evil ghost of Harwick when he was possessed uh, of, or a shade or something, you know, something that still keeps running that program up there in that uh, gambling hall. Um, but they could have gotten more out of him when they really tried to negotiate with them and then uh, from the stuff in the magical uh, laboratory they also could have found a lot more information that would have given them an idea of what might have happened there um, and they could have found his body of course but th that's, that's another thing um, so don't be afraid to not give them any information uh, because you can do two things you can never uh, uh, use it again or you can kind of tell the story of what is happening uh, what happened in uh, Harwick's tower uh, when they finally understand that the, uh, the big bad is their good friend who sent them on the quest uh, anyway uh, or uh, through a vision which I partly did uh, because I uh, let them meet the vision in a, in a kind of mushroom trip uh, I, I let them met, uh, meet Harwick who gave them the dagger again uh, because it was kind of trippy trip uh, and um, uh, so they got the dagger anyway uh, through, through that thing and then they also explored some other stuff in that trip that had to do with this location and actually uh, they now know that uh, because uh they now uh, they made a connection between the madness of Harwick and the magic, uh, the madness of, of Horatio Wittegar, um, much later on, and it is again a site to explore for them. So when they when they go there again, so okay, not only is it now it it was a dungeon, but it's now also a real location in the world where they have friends. Well, they didn't go back to these friends, but when they get back there, the tower will have evolved. Uh, it is cleared of ghosts, so the goblins are now moving across all levels. They probably have patched some stuff. A couple of new children might have been born because they have been away for a long time. Uh, it's a lively thing, and they might really have uh, um, 
I like the fact that the players would return there. Uh, there might also have uh, been some accidents with trappers in the woods, for example, uh, which uh, might give them cause to search the prayers instead of the prayers coming to them and 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 maybe letting the the priestess that is also there or the shaman um uh, call them from mystical means to to ask for aid so you can always reuse this location once you have built up such a history with your characters but also the history that's still left behind that never got explored um so this is what i think is a very cool <laughs> I hope you think it as well. A very cool first kind of adventure that you could do with uh, uh, with a party that's new to Dungeons and Dragons, uh, which ties into the main story, uh, but is still kind of this exploring kind of thing that uh, is not too doesn't have too much punishment in it, uh, and um, yeah. Um, might be a site for future adventures as well. Um, so they they went away here, um, and once they were halfway to the tower, uh, the the monk got. Uh, then the world went. I, I think I thought, uh, talked about this in the previous episode. But then the world went kind of gray. They saw this portal and they went through it and they uh, came to the monastery that the a monk had uh, uh, been part of, and they had to fight the enemy in the the main gate area of the monastery. And this is where they started to explore the fact that. Uh, there might have been something more going on when uh, uh, Bochi said that he had seen the outcome uh, when they would storm the door from the Goblin Tower and they shouldn't do that. Um, but that's probably for a later episode. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I have to tell you about this, how I did this adventure. Um, so do you have any questions? Do you have any comments? Uh, do you have any... Well, if you're on YouTube, leave them below. But I'm kind of... Uh, Hi, Baked Bean. Welcome to the chat. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the episode. Um, but you can still watch it on YouTube when it's up there. Um, um, let me think. What was I saying? Yeah, so uh, do you have any comments? Uh, chat about uh, this episode uh, it would be nice to hear some uh, remarks uh, so I can address them before we end the stream here I like the fact that uh, Jasper's rap is a bit shorter than uh, Talking Void for example because man 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 well either I was uh, very uh, elaborate in my uh, in my uh, uh, um, talky talky about this adventure or uh, you simply don't have any questions uh, so yeah I think that's about it for this episode then um, I hope you really enjoyed it but let me go to the to the talk screen again there I am um, sorry for the, the the sound issues I really don't know what's happening there but uh, I thought I did, but then I didn't. So, uh, yeah, this uh, episode will be up on uh, YouTube later on. Uh, September 6th, we will be playing the Precipice of Dreams again. Then the day after that, there will probably be another Jasper's Jes Lab with the fourth part in this series. Um, how to uh, do an adventure <laughs> campaign planning. And uh, hope to see you there. That will be the seventh, then the sixth will be be on at half past eight Central European time, and on Tuesdays, and so the seventh we all we are always on at uh, nine o'clock Central European time. Um, thanks for joining, and I think I will see you in the next one. And now we're going to do the television outro of uh, the Talking Void TV television. You know, goodbye. Ha, ha, ha.